Here's a disclaimer. Name is Glendon, your hustling godfather, and we're going to talk about holding companies and LLCs. Before we begin, we're going to make some assumptions that you already are in business or you have a clue or you've already got your LLC structure set up. Going to be a little bit different than beginning level stuff. You're the man, you're the woman, you have a business. If you have no intentions of becoming successful, if you have no use or have plan on hiring employees, if you have no exposure, if you have no risk to anything, you could do a sole proprietorship. My question to you is why would you do that when you know that it's very limited to begin with? This is a question that I get all the time. I could do a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship has more rights than the LLC because it's invested in the individual and all this other stuff. Let me tell you why you want to start an LLC instead of a sole proprietorship. If you're going to have a sole proprietorship, that means you're going to play small ball. You have no intentions of even moving to the junior leagues, the big leagues, the college leagues, or the pros. You're going to be playing small ball. Another reason that you want to start an LLC versus a sole proprietorship is something called legacy. I used to work for a company that sold furniture. One of the owners, Scott, he perpetrated a fraud. He was just like, yeah, I worked real hard to build this company, blah, 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 right? I knew that there was some things that was really interesting because when vendors, these were people who would sell us furniture came in, they all were drooling over this magnificent credit rating of this company. Scott wasn't that old. He was probably like five or six years older than me at the time. And I was like, hmm, interesting. But I didn't think nothing of it. Then one day, Scott's dad drops by and Scott and Bill are out of the office. And then he introduces himself. He's like, oh, you're Glendon, the new boy. Yeah, 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 what's going on? Dip, you know, he cool and stuff like that. He lets out this secret that's like, yeah, I'm really proud of Scott. I started this company 40 years ago and he kept it going. So that explained the, the great credit rating. Cause see, if you start an LLC or better yet, a holding company than an operating company under your holding company and you let that mature, by the time you're 60, 70, this is something you can hand off to your kids that is like an actual living breathing person on paper. This EIN is like a social security number and the LLC organizations, articles of organizations are like a birth certificate. So here you are, you about to retire and like here son, here daughter, here's this corporate entity that has a credit rating, has the ability to buy commercial property, may have commercial property, banking accounts, credit rating. So this is a legacy you can leave your kids. You can't do that with a sole proprietorship. Now, I've got that off my chest because I get a lot of people who's talking about low expectations. Now for the folks here for the real information, this is the LLC structure that I recommend to my clients and I recommend to you. Start a holding company today. And they're like, well, well Glendon, I don't know what I want to do. Don't matter. You want that aging. So if it, let's say you start your holding company today. You can have it as XYZ holding company or you can call, you can call it whatever you want to. You start that today. The clock starts ticking for credit purposes, for legacy purposes, for anything. And this is the beauty of this holding company. Let's say you have one and a half kids. Let's make it two full kids. And you want to give these kids this company. You can create the value of the company. You can decide whatever value you want to it. And what you can do is give your kids like 28, don't quote me on this because I didn't look it up, but I think you can give as a couple 30 grand a year or 15,000. Let's just say you're an individual. Let's say, yeah, you're an individual, you own the company, so you're getting them 15 grand a year. You can do whatever you want with the valuation of your company, and you can give your kids part of the company every year. So when you get ready to take that dirt nap, there is no such thing as estate taxes. There's no such thing as probate because they already own the company and you gave it to them through a tax-free vehicle. You can't do that with a sole proprietorship. Once again, we're playing big boy ball. We're playing in the National Pro League. 
We're not trying to play this small ball because we're not thinking about just today. We're not thinking about our immediate needs, which is stay under the radar. I don't want to make too much of any noise. Get the man on me. You're going to get the man on you. You know why? Because you're going to become the man. By starting a holding company now, even if you don't know what you want to do, you get to create this. And I'm going to go ahead and give you some freebies. Let's say your name is Ed. And Ed, you're a software engineer, Ed. And you go out and you form a holding company. And while you're forming this holding company, since you're a software engineer, Ed, and you make like 200K, you go out and you get all this business credit. You get the Chase Inc. You get lines of credit. You get all of that stuff hinged to pass your income. It's already there because it's hinged upon your job income. Then you start your business part time. And then five years later, your business is making, you know, 500,000, maybe a million a year, and you could quit your software job and you roll in there and it's like, oh man, your, your corporation structure is five years old. It's had credit since day one. Oh my God. This just sets you the stage for you to get bigger and better things down the road. You know, 10 years later, you can go out and get a million dollar loan because what you got five years of tax returns, five years of income statements. You are legit. You the man, but you can't do that with a sole proprietorship. Nope, can't do it. These are just some of the scenarios and what I espouse and what you should do. Because if you don't know what an LLC is, Google it. That's plenty of information there. But if you want to run a business legitimately, you need a, a holding company and assigned off that holding company, you need an operating company. That is two LLCs and the first LLC must own the second LLC, which means the first LLC must be formed first. You have some people who backdoor it, but then you've got to make a lot of administrative changes. And let's say your baby corp is like five or six years older than your holding. You could do that, but it looks a little weird. I just like to do it the right way from jump, but you can backdoor it. You can have your company buy this company or actually turn your company into a holding company if you haven't gone too far down the road. I don't know. One of the reasons that you need to do this is let's say you have a situation with child support and you have a situation with an ex-wife or soon to be ex-wife. By forming these entities, these children on paper, you give yourself tons and tons of leverage that you don't have as Ed, the software engineer with a job. Because what they're gonna do is like, Ed, how much you make? I make $200,000 a year. All right, Ed, two kids, we're gonna take 25%, so your child support is gonna be 2,500. Oh, wait a minute, we're gonna do medical or some. Your child support is $3,000. That's a lot of money, your honor. Ed, pay or go to jail. Yes, sir. Or you can have a corporation making a million dollars a year, and then, oh, you, get on the skits with your ex or whatever, then you just depreciate the company and you turn in your P&L statement to the court. And it's like, um, I made no money. Are you sure, Ed? It's been a rough few years. But your taxes a few years ago, that was a few years ago, but this is now. Okay, Ed, your child support is $150 a month. Thank you, Your Honor. And Ed goes skipping out the courthouse. But you can't do this. And many of you want to fight me and go ahead. And I understand you're scared. I understand starting a business is a scary proposition. I get it. I understand. But you know what's a scarier proposition? Not having a legal entity that you can control your income and then whatever happens on the outside that comes in, it just tears your life asunder. To me, that's just more scary than starting a business. And this is just some of the benefits that you can get from forming an LLC. Now, here's the, the real cheap stuff. You can go to your secretary of state. You can form what I call a naked LLC online in like five or 10 minutes. I don't recommend those. I recommend that you have solid articles of organization. You have an operating agreement and you have a plan and you have, and this, this is a mix of estate planning business planning and life planning. Nice, nice little way to do it. Now, well, here we go. 
There are many people who want to know what the art of holding companies, legal business structures, and the estate planning compromises of, or what's in it. All right. So this is the main ingredients, Fat Cat Secrets, Fat Cat Secrets, Parenting Contracts, LLCs and Trusts, the Art of Holding Companies, Fat Cat Secrets, How to Organize Parent and Operating Companies, Why, What, and When. All right. So we will go here. You can peruse all of this. Now, this is where the juice is. The juice, let's go back here. All right, this is where all of the juice is going. This is where all of the new content's going. So we've got a lot of activity here. How to start a holding company from scratch, business credit essentials, real estate holding company information and benefits, YouTube strategy, holding company banking rules, Holding company philosophy, legal child support reduction stabilization strategies, personal credit development 2019. Now, what the art of holding is going to be is a living course, meaning that I periodically will update. I will periodically offer webinars for the art of holding in the foreseeable future. I am going to Wyoming. I am going to New Mexico. I'm going to actually do these things like when I wrote my book about Uber. I actually signed up, went to the process, and drove for Uber. This to make sure that the information that you're getting is solid. For some reason, some people seem to think that it means I live in an apartment and, I, and I'm driving a, a used uh, car. I don't know. But anywho. Uh, there will be more webinars. There'll be more strategy sessions because this stuff is constantly changing. And what I did is put it in the art of holding because this information is powerful. This information is insane for what you need. But you need everything going here. You need all of this as a man, as a hustler. You need all of this, right? So I'm going to give you three ways to get in. And what I'm going to do is on the fly, I'm going to have a one and done. And it's not going to be $99.99. Let's just be clear about that. And also, let's talk about this. Um, for some of the business credit development strategies, you're going to spend $100 to $120 a month for a year or more before you see any benefit. So if you're one of those people like, eh, 99, man, that's burning a hole in my wallet, don't even buy. Don't even come over here. Uh, because what we're going to do, this information isn't for next year. It isn't to get ready for the summer. This information is for the rest of your life. This information is information you can pass on to your children. Now, instead of looking at it as, oh, just something to do right now, start looking at it as, I can improve generation after generation and we can all get wealthy. That's what we're going to do. So this is a Cyber Monday special. I'm going to do one and done for 3,999 bucks. And I'm going to do a 12 month program and I'm going to do a 24 month program. That will be below the video. And this offer will be until 11.59, then the Cyber Monday, Pacific time, because I got love from my folks in Cali. My folks in Cali always say, hey, man, you forget about us, you forget us. But to get this one and done, it's four grand today and until the end of Cyber Monday. And then I will put a 12-month program below and a 13-month program below. And there you have it. Because to do these things, you've got to run your personal life as a business and run your business as a larger business. By doing those two things, and this is what we're going to get into, the art of holding companies, is phenomenally going to change your life. Um, there's a dude, his name is Arton Bolden, 
he just got the free information and he's doing a GMF saving. He, he listened to me. He's a young man. He's got a car that's paid off. He lives on his own and he's able to save a G a month off of the free information. And typically when I'm having static from people, it's just because they don't want to uh, deploy the steps. They don't want to put stuff into order. They don't want to shape stuff up. They're looking for instant results. And I don't have instant results. I got long term results. I got you know this time next year this time the year after you can be sitting in a really city si a pretty situation while the rest of the world is melting and burning down because you know aside from what you hear we've had the major hurricanes florida north carolina puerto rico and now we've had these forest fires these events have displaced probably a hundred and hundred and fifty thousand people that's i mean just this year and then when we go with a thousand plus companies are shutting doors then we go with the lowered demand for oil then we go with the number of people who are living in their cars and it just doesn't add up to a beautiful economic picture for those who are not deploying the art of holding strategies so once again all of the information is below